Hey guys, Fuzzy here with another Fuzzy Creation, and today I'll finally be doing with a Bonnie from Finance and Pretties 2. I made my first Bonnie figure at the beginning of last year, and now almost two years later I'm making a video for it. I think it's better I made the video this year though, because I think I've improved at least a little bit since then. So of course since this is a remake, it'll be uh, very different from the first one. This figure is not going to have joints, but if you want to know how I did the joints for the first Bonnie video, I'll be showing that later in the video. But besides the joints, I made it mostly the same way, but just more accurately. It's also a little bigger than the previous one because I wanted to work on making my figures larger to fit more detail. And larger figures are overall cooler to display in my opinion. To start this creation, I made a skeleton of the body and the legs. I try to make the skeleton part thick enough to hold all the weight the outer shell will put onto the body, but later in the video you will see that I have to reinforce the legs. The first part of the suit I made was the bottom piece, which I made by creating a structuring and then uh, filling it in. I'm not very experienced making non-lego figures, so it was a little tricky to attach this piece to the skeleton, so in the future I want to make a ton more figures like these so I can improve my skills even further. Next are the leg pieces, which I made a similar way with the uh, structuring. I made them by connecting two circles with two pipe cleaners on either side, then wrapping them horizontally. When filling the pieces in, I puffed them out a little from the inside to get that little accurate suit look. For the holes in the suit, I make the outline separately and then attach them to the circles on the top and the bottom. After filling them in, I can trim the fuzz along the inner sides of the hole so I can make the ripped and cracked edges more prominent. Before I put all the leg pieces on, I have to make the little knee pad things and the internal details that will be poking out through the holes of the leg pieces. For the feet, I made a separate piece that went into the skeleton, which wasn't very sturdy, so later when I make another figure, I'll build the feet into the skeleton. After the base of the foot is done, I'll start making the right foot cover and constructing the left foot. I think my favorite part about making animatronics is when I'm finished making the suit pieces and I put all of them on to complete the section I'm working on. And also making the wires is fun too because I love adding on extra details. I find it kind of funny how my first Bonnie figure had blue wires, even though there aren't any seen in the pictures of any of the animatronics. Like, where did I even get that from? Next, after completing the legs, is the torso. First, I connected a few more pipe cleaners to the skeleton to make it longer. Then I attached some ribs just like an actual endoskeleton, so it keeps the torso piece in place when I put it on. I connected the arms first because if I put the torso on first, it would be hard to attach it from the inside. So I made the torso on the skeleton instead of making it a separate piece to put on. The other animatronics I made don't have a full endoskeleton, so this is the first time I have done this. When filling in the torso, instead of wrapping it all the way around, I filled it in with multiple lines of cut pipe cleaners. For the stomach pattern, I first made a plate to put on the torso, but later I took it off and just made the design onto the front. Yeah. 
And after patching up the back, I can start working on the other arm. Even though you won't be able to see the detail on the endoskeleton underneath the suit, it will make the pieces that go over it more sturdy. When the pieces are all on, I can now make the hand onto the arm and seal it up. Before I do that though, I realized the left arm doesn't have a little nub sticking out of it, just the shoulder pad thing. So I had to unravel the pipe cleaner that was attaching it to the body. Even though I messed up and I had to remove the nub, it made it easier to attach the wires to the socket. After the other arm is fixed, I could finally make its only hand to complete the other arm. The hand is made of two plates that I sandwiched between the pipe cleaner sticking out of the arm, and for the fingers I just made an outline and stuck them through the, one of the plates that I bent at the top to make it look more like a box, if that makes sense. Then before I start making the head, I added any last wires or details to the figure. The head is easy since there's no face, so first I made two plates for the bottom jaw, one plate to attach the neck, and one plate to put the teeth on. So then after I could put the plates together to hide the extra pipe cleaner sticking out from anything that I've put on top of the uh, plates. The teeth are always fun to make because I weave a pipe cleaner between some white pipe cleaners that are bent in half and at the end it's a perfect line of teeth that I can connect to the jaw. When the teeth are done, I also have to make a miniature jaw with teeth for the endoskeleton. Then since the jaw wasn't big enough, I extended it at the back and made it rounded so it would look more complete. When that's done, I can start making the endoskeleton head, which is something the first figure didn't have, so it's cool to finally have done that detail. I also created two plates for the endo head as well to make it more sturdy. The two plates were also convenient to stuff pipe cleaners into so I could secure the endo head to the jaw. After the top of the head is filled in, I could finally start measuring at the ears. To make the ears more 3D, instead of making plates, I built a structure for each section. Sticking in the ears at the top of the head was a little unstable since it's only going through one layer of pipe cleaner. Now that I think about it, I could have just made an extra plate to cover the inside of the head. And for the wires in the head, I bent some pipe cleaners in half and then stuck them through the top. And when I was done, I then attached the jaw to the headpiece. Finally, I stuck the neck into the torso and wrapped them together. The legs also needed extra support to stand up. So I stuck some thicker pipe cleaners through the legs to make them stand up. Here's a bonus part on how I made the joints for the first figure. The parts of the limbs are connected like chain links, which is what makes them move so loosely. If you want them to be a little less loose, you could just wrap the joints with uh, more pipe cleaner. And for the last detail, I thought I would include include a face that is removable, just for like a little extra thing. And there you have it. The full remake of Withered Bonnie is complete. What do you guys think? 
Do you think I should have kept the loose joints or do you think I should make more statue-like creations? Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm glad all of you find my art interesting and I hope you guys get inspired to make your own creations too. Subscribe for more creations like this and uh, have a good day.